Here are the craziest facts North Koreans are supposed to believe. Number 9. Kim Jong-il was superhuman. Kim Jong-il, the former supreme leader of North Korea, had many skills. Just to showcase one of the supposed superhuman skills he was supposed to have, he supposedly invented the hamburger. Yep, that's right, the staple of Western fast food for generations was dreamed up by then supreme leader. Minju Joseon, the North Korean state-run government newspaper publication, credits Kim Jong-il with creating the hamburger. According to the paper, the leader invented a brand new sandwich and named it Double Bread with Meat. The new food was invented to supply quality nutrition to teachers and students. Next, a plant was supposed to be set up for mass double bread with meat production. That's not the only outrageous claim made about Kim Jong-il. Ever wish you didn't need to pee? Or poop? Well, you can for sure learn a thing or two from the former dear leader. His body was so well adjusted, he just didn't need to go to the bathroom. That's right, he never used the bathroom, which is something Kim Jong-un learned as well. An official biography posted on the North Korean state website said that he just didn't sh Strangely enough, that biography has now been removed. You know what? I can't help but think that his body just wasn't that well adjusted enough because, you know, he did die. Before he died, though, he had a pretty spectacular life as a sports star, too. Yep, move over, Tiger. Get out of the way, Sergio. You guys have nothing on Kim Jong-il. His official biography says that he first picked up a golf club in 1994 while visiting North Korea's only golf course. In his first golf game ever, he went on to shoot 38 under par with no fewer than 11 holes in one. The former Supreme Leader was also a fashion icon around the world, and if that's not enough for you to fall head over heels for him, when he was born, winter turned to spring and a new star appeared in the sky. I mean, to be honest, if I were making up things about myself, I'd choose other things. Oh yeah, his birth also prompted the appearance of a double rainbow. The only problem is that official Soviet records paint quite a different picture. It appears that Kim Jong-il was actually born in the Siberian village of Vyatskoye in 1941. Slightly less glorious, but hey, a pesky Soviet record isn't going to stop their government. Number 8. Wonder Drug of North Korea Ever heard of Kumdang 2? Well, you should have, because according to the government of North Korea, it's the wonder drug that cures both Ebola and AIDS. Oh, and also MERS and tuberculosis. The name means golden sugar in Korean. In case you're wondering where to get some, it's manufactured by the Pagang Pharmaceutical Company. The Korea Central News Agency announced in 2015 that this ginseng-based drug contains small amounts of rare earth metals and trace amounts of gold and platinum. According to its official website, it was tested in Africa where it was injected into its subjects and every single one of them noted an improvement in their various conditions with 56% completely cured, all without side effects. Not content with the already impressive list of ills it can remedy, the North Korean government also claimed the drug could be a cure for morning sickness, cancer, bird flu, diabetes, arthritis, infertility, and harm from the use of computers. Thank goodness, because I definitely need this drug now. I'm just happy it basically covers everything that might pop up in my life. What I'm really trying to say is, we're all saved. Number 7. The Japanese Stole Time North Koreans were told for nearly a hundred years that the Japanese stole time from them back in 1919 during their occupation. Korea was under direct Japanese rule for 35 years from 1910 when the Joseon dynasty ended to the end of the Second World War in 1945, when the United States and the Soviet Union occupied the Korean Peninsula. North Korea was in the same time zone as both Japan and South Korea until the 70th anniversary of Korea's liberation in 2015. 2015 was obviously a bigger year for North Korea because Kim Jong-un decided to reset the current standard time by 30 minutes to celebrate the country's liberation from quote, wicked Japanese imperialists back in 1945. They're the only country in the world, Pyongyang time zone, which is eight and a half hours ahead of UTC, coordinated universal time. Well, I mean, when you're the new supreme ruler, everyone's on your time. 
Number 6. What Famine? During the 1990s, North Korea faced severe famine. The North Korean famine and the accompanying general economic crisis are known as the Arduous March in North Korea. Though estimates of the death toll during this terrible time vary wildly, it's known that hundreds of thousands of citizens died following an extensive series of floods in the mid-90s, which covered around 30% of the country, followed almost immediately by serious droughts. North Korea soon instigated austerity measures, dubbed the Eat Two Meals a Day campaign. Two meals a day would be a luxury with what actually happened. The term arduous march became a metaphor for the famine following a state propaganda campaign in 1993. The Rodong Sinmen urged the North Korean citizenry to invoke the memory of an apocryphal fable from King Il Sung's time as a commander of a small group of anti-Japanese guerrilla fighters. As part of this state campaign, uses of words such as famine and hunger were banned because they implied government failure. Citizens who said deaths were because of famine could have been in serious trouble with the authorities. Resourceful North Koreans who have a long history of gathering roots and barks to add a kick to their meals were also reported to be bulking up food rations with grass. The official state line was that this was just a food shortage and conditions were because of bad weather and the failure of implementing Kim's teachings. They said that the situation outside the country was far worse in comparison, and then went on to declare sawdust to be a nutritious supplement and encourage people to add it to their meager rations. Number 5. The Peace Village In North Korea's part of the demilitarized zone on the border with South Korea stands a village called Kijongdong, which literally translates to Peace Village. Dong is one of two villages in the DMZ, the other being Daesongdong in its South Korean counterpart, which stands in stark contrast. The official position of the North Korean government is that the village contains a 200-family collective farm, which is serviced by a childcare center, kindergarten, primary and secondary schools, and a hospital. The buildings are bright white with multi-story apartments with blue roofs. And, oh yeah, they're all supplied with electricity. Around the buildings are a large number of well-cultivated fields. Outside North Korea, it's a very different story. The village is known elsewhere by the name Propaganda Village. Observation from the other village in South Korea suggests that the town is an uninhabited village built in the 1950s in a propaganda effort to encourage South Korean defection and to house North Korean soldiers manning the DMZ. The buildings are merely concrete shells which lack windows and even interior rooms. Lights in the buildings are apparently set by timers, and the streets are kept clean and tidy to preserve the illusion of occupation. Loudspeakers are attached to the buildings and blare out messages which originally declared the virtues of North Korea and urge soldiers and farmers to cross the border and be welcomed as brothers. Eventually, as its value in inducing defections proved minimal, the content was switched to anti-Western speeches, agitprop operas, and patriotic marching music for up to 20 hours a day. For a period from 2004 to 2016, both North and South agreed to end their loudspeaker broadcasts at each other. However, the broadcasts have since resumed after escalating tensions as a result of the January 2016 nuclear test. Number 4. Kim Jong-un is a genius. I mentioned the former supreme leader Kim Jong-il and his amazing feats, but let's not forget that he was succeeded by Kim Jong-un, the current supreme commander of North Korea, who's no less fantastical than his father. According to the state, Kim Jong-un is a genius with a thorough knowledge of politics, culture, and military affairs. Schooled in Switzerland, Kim Jong-un, according to state media and a manual on what to teach North Korean schoolchildren, was not only a gifted sailor as a youth, winning a yacht race against none other than the CEO, a foreign yacht company at the tender age of nine, but he also learned to drive as a toddler. I mean, can't they make up at least slightly believable lies? Speaking of unbelievable lies, ahem, excuse me, I meant unbelievable facts, Kim Jong-un also doesn't use the bathroom, just like his father. Kim Jong-un is also reported to be a composer of musical scores and a skilled artist. To be honest, I'd love to get a monthly magazine about Kim Jong-un and his exploits. It'd be the perfect type of bathroom reading material to help get things going. 
Number three, everybody loves North Korea. It certainly seems like North Korea is the laughing stock of countries all across the world, even though North Korea works as hard as they can to keep this from happening. When Kim Il-sung's personality cult began to emerge in the late 1950s, the North Korean media dictated a lot of time to talking about how popular he was around the world. Ever since then, the popularity of North Korea has been core to the country's propaganda. Today, almost every one of North Korea's major newspapers will publish at least one piece on the activities of Kim supporters worldwide. The North Korean people are constantly reminded that their country and leaders are respected across the world, not only because of the might of their weapons, but also because of the ingenuity of their ideas. North Koreans are bombarded with propaganda which paints their country as a major player. Their leaders are supposed to be figures who inspire admiration across the world. One article claimed that 450 streets in 100 countries have been named after Kim Il-sung. If reports are actually to be believed, North Korean citizens are convinced that the rest of the world sees them in a glowing light. Official sources tell the people of North Korea that they're an incredibly important country on the global scene, that their leaders are the most powerful on the planet, and that they're universally loved. In addition to those tidbits, every country in the world celebrates the dear leader's birthday. Of course they do. At this point, I'm just wondering how much the people actually believe versus what they pretend to believe. Number two, no internet to protect the West. Let's take a minute or two to look at the internet. Imagine for a moment that it didn't exist. Maybe you're one of the lucky people that remember life before the internet, almost like the dark ages, right? Well, the internet obviously does exist. Only a handful of state officials are allowed to access it. There's some broadband and even fiber optic infrastructure in the country, but it tends to be between major government installations and it's not widespread. Online services for citizens and most institutions is strictly limited to a domestic-only network called Whamyong, and while there's been a 3G network since 2013, its use is limited to foreigners only. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and South Korean websites have all been blocked since 2016 for reasons that I don't think I need to explain. North Korea itself only has 28 websites. The fascinating thing about this internet blackout is the official reasons given by the state. It's that they're trying to protect the reputation of the West. How considerate of them. Number one, the US started the Korean War. It's no secret that relations between North Korea and the United States have never been great. Actually, they're pretty hostile. This has been the case since the Korean War of the early 1950s and continues to this day. The history of that war is pretty well documented as the first military action of the Cold War began when some 75,000 soldiers from the North Korean army poured across the 38th parallel, the boundary between North and South Korea. Pick up a book in North Korea though, and the story is very different. Official state records show that the United States started the war by occupying South Korea and then attacking the peaceful and unsuspecting North Korea. The story goes that the US tried to take control of the North, but Kim Il-sung heroically fought back against American troops who retreated in defeat. North Korean media maintain that the United States still occupies South Korea to this day and citizens are continually told that the US is preparing to attack them. Furthermore, North Koreans are told that South Korea continues to suffer under the rule of the United States and that anyone trying to cross into the American occupied country will be shot on sight as they attempt to do so. Here's what's next. Normally considered an extremely important part of any individual's life. You do it so you can discover new horizons and understand more about what's going on around you. Well, sure, the same theory applies in North Korea, but the practice is a bit different to say the least. The entire education system...